What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the Kentucky Football Dynasty on College Football 25. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be taking on the Florida Gators at the Swamp, which will be a super fun game to play. In the last episode, uh, we traveled on the road and defeated fourth-ranked Ole Miss and then managed to lose at home to Vanderbilt the next week. Um, so it's been kind of a crazy, hectic season. I mean, if you take a look at the season stats for the team, I've been doing poor Brock Vandegrift very dirty. I've thrown 15 picks with him in six games. It's been pretty rough. And then the rushing game hasn't gotten going too much so far yet. Uh, with Chip Train, I'm only having 345 yards. And then receiving-wise, you see how lopsided it is in favor of Barryon Brown and that speed that he has. He only has seven more catches than Jamori Macklin, but he has like almost a 1,000 yards more than him. But we don't have any blazing speed in this starting lineup, so I'm actually going to go and I'm going to make a change to the starting lineup. Just something that I think is going to help us uh, – offensively and get a little bit more speed on the outside and so what I'm going to do here I don't really know how I want to handle this because obviously I love Dane Key and I want Dane Key to play a lot and then Jamori Macklin has been our second best receiver outside of uh, Barry on Brown but Brandon White even though he's a 64 overall he has 98 speed and 94 acceleration which is the second fastest player on the team behind Barry on Brown so I think what I want to do here is I'm going to move Brandon White into the starting lineup next to Dane Key. I'm going to move Dane Key to the slot, and then I'm going to make Jamori Macklin uh, the fourth guy in the receiver room. Also, I had a very weird glitch where it changed the jersey numbers on a couple of my players. Like, Deion Walker is now number 91, and you can't actually edit it. And then also, um, Christian Story had his number changed from number 4 to number 32, so I'm not really entirely sure what happened there but their numbers got changed and now I can't change it so now instead of Dion Walker wearing the number zero which is just super sick for a player of his caliber on the defensive line now he's wearing 91. So we are traveling to the swamp this week one of the crazier places to play in college football. Uh, Florida is ranked 22nd in the country so we're in for a bit of a war today. Um, it's raining here though in Gainesville, Florida so maybe that'll work in our favor. So here we go, opening the game off here in the swamp. We've got the white jerseys with the white chrome helmets. I had to pull out that that combo for this game, and uh, we go pretty much nowhere on the kick return. Uh, so there's uh, Brandon White in the starting lineup now, and we're going to start off with a handoff to Chip Trainum. And he's going nowhere. I don't see Dane Key anywhere, but we're going to get it out to the outside to Jamori Macklin and a big pickup for Macklin. I took him out of the starting lineup and he immediately responded with the first big play of the game for us. Let's try to get Brandon White his first catch and he's going to get one on the sideline, so getting Brandon White involved. I can't believe that worked. We roll out with Vandegrift, and he's able to drop it off. I'm feeling the Baryon Brown touch pass here. Something that's going to get us into open field with him. And you're going to cut in. Nice move and a solid pick up there. So here we go, third and five. A critical moment, and our new starter, Brandon White, has two catches early in this game. And I like getting him involved early. It's a little bit weird not seeing Dane Key out in the starting lineup, but we just needed a little bit of juice, and Aya overthrew that. That should have been a touchdown. Here we go. Third and goal. I'm actually going to change this up and try to get Demi Sumo in the end zone, but we actually cannot hear the coach. We're not going to be able to get this play call in. We can't hear the sidelines right now, so we're going to try to... Let's feed that in there to Brandon White. He caught it. Touchdown, Kentucky. So Brandon White, in his first drive as a starter, had, I think he had at least three catches and ended up with the touchdown. So that change we made in the starting lineup brought some juice to it for sure. So here we are on defense. Look at Deion Walker wearing number 91. That's so weird. I hate that. 
Oh, and he's going to get in there and get a sack immediately. Maybe the new number is a good switch up for him. Deion Walker just breaks through the line and gets a sack on the first defensive play of the game. It's pretty wild that you can't even, like, edit players' numbers in this game. I understand the whole name, image, and likeness thing, but, like, in, the, uh, in, in Madden, you can change players' numbers if you want to. So I think it's a little bit weird that you can't change players' numbers in this game. Uh, because I, I can't go fix Deion Walker's number. Like, he's just going to be number 91 now. There's nothing I can do about it. But he is breaking through that Florida line. Whoever his matchup is right now cannot stay in front of him. Uh, so I'm going to keep using Deion Walker and keep bullying this offensive line with him and trying to get some disruption in the backfield. Like, literally every play, obviously wasn't able to catch him there. Uh-oh. A big hit there by Zion Childress. Look, Keyshawn Silver's number 93, too. All of my players' numbers are getting changed. It's so weird. He's supposed to be number 9, and instead he's number 93. He gets in there for a big stop. But I don't know what's going on with the game, changing all my players' numbers. I, I don't understand what's happening right now. And it is good. So Florida gets on the board as well. Van de Griff with the snap. We're going to get it to Demi Sumo. He's got blockers on the outside. Oh, I should not have tried to hurdle there. That was almost really bad. Dane Key, I put him as the third string, but they're they're playing Jamori Macklin way more than him. And Jamori Macklin gets open and a huge pickup. And it just feels weird not having Dane Key on the field. Like, it feels like he should definitely be out there. But right now, these other three receivers, because of the speed that they have, they are able to produce a little bit more for us. We're going to hit Brandon White over here. He's going to catch it. Brandon White has been a much-needed injection of speed into this offense. Let's try to hit a mid-screen here to Brandon White. Like, look, Dane Key's not on the field. Now they got Anthony Brown Stevens in instead, so I'm not really sure what's going on, and they had that screen completely covered. So we're going to have to settle for a 21-yard field goal here. I just hope I can hit it in this rowdy environment. I think I should be able to with Alex Rayner, and I missed it. I missed a 21-yard chip shot with Alex Rayner, and um, that is embarrassing. Let's we'll see if we can take this punt to the house. He's going to have time, it looks like. So you go this way, take the block, cut to the outside, spin in, break a tackle. Nice return for Barryon Brown to get us in some pretty solid field position. And still no Dane Key. We have four receivers out there, and not a single one of them is named Dane, named Dane Key. I'm going to have to put him back in the starting lineup if we want him to play at all, it looks like. So we're able to get another stop. Let's see if we can't crib this one with Barry on. We have one punt return for a touchdown with him this season, and that speed of his makes him so hard to catch. Cut in, and he's going to return it basically every time if he has the room. I'm proud of myself for not turning the ball over, though, uh, at least up to this point, because that has been a major problem for us. In the games that we win, I don't turn the ball over. In the games that we lose, I, I think I threw four picks against uh, South Carolina, and I threw four picks against Vanderbilt, and those are both games that we lost. So hanging on to the ball is basically the difference between us winning or losing a game. Still no Barry on Brown, but or still no Dane Key, but they have Barry on Brown in... Press man coverage and Brandon White. I would assume one of those two guys is going to get open. And Barion is literally open immediately. Like, he came off the line wide open. And that is exactly what I want to see. Every time I see Barion Brown in press man coverage, it's a touchdown. So our defense is able to get a stop. And we are in a situation again where we can move down the field and extend the lead against Florida. Screen to Demi Sumo. We finally get good blocking. And Demi Sumo has a lot of room and I spin the wrong direction, but uh, Demi Sumo Karnbe with one of his biggest yardage gains of this season. And I definitely want to get him more involved as well, as he is definitely a big weapon for us. I also want to make sure I'm getting the tight ends involved as well, because we've got a pair of really solid tight ends with Dingle and Caddis. Dingle makes a man miss and picks up the first down. And I'm very glad I've been running these short yardage passes because we've been able to get into a rhythm with Brock Vandegrift. He's going to take the tunnel screen. Brandon White has been incredible for us today. He's a 64 overall, but that speed of his makes him so dangerous. Dane Key is now in the game. 
maybe I can fit a pass in there to him. I'm going to try to, and he's going to score a touchdown. So Dane Key may not be getting as many snaps this game, but we're able to get him in the end zone on a slant, and um, definitely very happy to see him get a touch in the end zone. Florida in a situation where they desperately need to score the football as Graham Mertz gets blown up by Khalil Saunders on the read option attempt. And this defensive line is feasting today. We are getting in the backfield every single play as Deion Walker annihilates Graham Mertz in the backfield. And he's taking a ton of hits. And, I mean, this O-line just cannot contain our defensive front. Oh, my goodness. We ran into the kicker. I'm not even going to get Barry on hurt here because this is going to be a first down. Uh, I think that was Ty Bryant who ran into him. And roughing the kicker happens way too often in this game. It's definitely something they're probably going to have to patch because I know that it's definitely a problem for, like, everybody getting a ton of running into the kicker penalties. Um, just a little too aggressive with it, I guess. But that's all right. Our defense is playing pretty well, so hopefully we can continue that. Um, but... I hope that wasn't the momentum shift that they needed. It's so weird seeing Deion Walker and Keyshawn Silver, who used to be so drippy with the single-digit numbers. It's so weird seeing them now wearing number 91 and number 93. I don't like it. Because we used to have Oxendine wearing 8, Silver wearing 9, and uh, Deion Walker wearing 0. And having three defensive linemen wearing single-digit numbers is just so cool. But they're starting to move the ball now. That running into the kicker play seems to have given them the momentum boost that they needed. And Zion Childress is headhunting today. He has multiple big-time hits in this game. And it's second and eight now. And they're going to hand it off to Montreal Johnson. What a move by Montreal Johnson. And then... A nice tackle in the open field by Zion Childress, and that's going to be a first down for Florida. And they just cannot contain Deion Walker. I'm getting pressure with him on every single play. We just uh, need to get some better protection in coverage. And what a play by Maxwell Hairston because that was a touchdown. He got beat off the line. I guess he was playing zone. The dude was wide open, and Maxwell, one of the best cornerbacks in the game, came up big with a nice deflection. Third and goal. If we can hold them to three here after that running into the kicker play penalty, I will be very happy. See if we can't get in here with Khalil Saunders. He's going to make some... Oof. And so that's going to be an incomplete pass. So they're going to have to kick a field goal here. Florida kicks their second field goal of the game. We've got Dane Key in single man press coverage over there. I'm going to try to get him the ball. And Dane Key says, Coach, you better put me back in the starting lineup. He's going to break a tackle and score. Dane Key gets pulled out of the starting lineup, immediately comes in, and he, now he has two touchdowns. 32 seconds left. The, what in the world? Our offense is on the field on defense. Jamori Macklin is on the defensive line. And it worked! Jamori Macklin with the sack. Was that Brock Vandergriff with the sack? I'm sorry? So, I'm not entirely sure what just happened there. Um, but our offense was on the field on defense. Jamori Macklin got a sack. And then... We got an offside penalty. They're going to settle for a field goal. This is very cowardly by Billy Napier here. They should definitely be trying to score a touchdown. I'm sure the fans aren't happy. And they're going to just kick the field goal. No pressure there. And then Alex Afari absolutely lit him up. And that is not a good sign. Deion Walker is down on the play. He has been our most disruptive player on defense. The good thing is we have a really talented true freshman over there in Brian Robinson to replace him. And any game experience we can get for him is just going to make him better. The corner pass is going to get out of bounds. Kentucky in a situation where we need to get another stop here. Johnson in motion. He's going to get rid of it. It's going to get picked by Jansen Dunn. So Jansen Dunn with the huge interception in the end zone. And he has been a playmaker on the defense as well. Another interception for him. And it looks like Deion Walker has elbow bursitis. But he says he will return soon. So I guess he's okay for the most part. 
I probably should have just kept that one in the end zone instead of trying to return it with Jansen Dunn, but Florida was finally moving down the field, and we were able to get the stop. Now, Chip Trainum going nowhere. Vandegrift. We're going to get it to Brown Stevens. He's going to get lit up over the middle, and that was just a waste of a drive. So Florida has kicked four field goals in this game. We have kept them out of the end zone the entire game. Vandegrift, I'm going to have to bullet that one over to Berrion, and I'm glad I did because any other pass I tried to make there probably would have not ended well. So it's third and two. I really have not Im implemented the run game at all in this, in this matchup. Um, and then I just miss on the screen pass. So Vandegriff, who I've been very, very accurate with up to this point, uh, a couple missed passes there, and like literally, I just threw it behind him on the screen. Oh, Octavius Oxendine literally body slams Graham Mertz on the read option. We were all over that, and Graham Mertz doesn't even know where he is right now. Mertz. Gets it over. Alex Afari can't make the tackle, and Florida scores a touchdown. Florida now going for two as well. Empty backfield, so I'm assuming they are throwing this one. Let's see if we can get in there and disrupt it a little bit, and it's good. Mo Bamba is playing right now, but I'm sorry. Y'all have... I actually can't change it. So I was going to try to change the play to get Barryon Brown going vertically, but... I don't have an option there for that. Chip Tranum, nice pickup, and I have not used him very much today. Seven carries for 34 yards, and I've just I got to do a better job of getting the the passing game imp or the running game implemented. But it's just so hard when you have such talented receivers, and basically the entire second half I have really struggled to make the right passes. Thankfully, haven't thrown an interception yet, but. I definitely have not been very good. So here we are. I don't even know what my routes are looking like. We're going to go play action here, and he's going to come through completely untouched for the sack, and Florida is on fire right now. But Zion Childress just alleviated all of my worries. What a play from Zion Childress. Pick six to swing the momentum back in our favor. And I love to see that. Zion Childress, the senior, coming up big with the pick six. I'm going to try usering Zion for a second. Oh, never mind. Oh, is he going to save the touchdown? Yes, he is. Good thing we have Zion Childress out there, man. So I never I never use her uh, DBs. I like to use her my D-line because I, like I like to run over the... Oh, 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 oh. J.J. Weaver with the sack. I almost had him with Deion Walker, but I clicked the dive button a little bit too early trying to jump on him. And it's now second and 23. So basically every time it seems like Florida is getting a little bit of momentum, our defense and our playmakers make a play. And oh my goodness, that was almost another pick six for Alex Afari, who has been all over the place this season as well. I think Deion Walker, Zion Childress, Alex Afari, and Jansen Dunn have been the main standouts of the defense so far. They're going to go for a screen here, and guess who was there? Alex Afari. Fourth and 22 with four and a half minutes left. They know they don't have a choice but to go for it here. If we get a stop here, I think this game is all but over. The deep pass, he caught it, and he scored. So fourth and 22, and Florida is able to score a touchdown. Uh, so the one thing we needed not to happen just happened. This game is far from over. And I overthrow Brandon White. And this second half has been by far my fault. Like, I have missed so many throws. And then I throw a pick. So I cannot get out of my own way with Brock Vandegrift, man. Like, I... I played a perfect first half four touchdowns no picks and now I can't complete a pass and I throw an interception in a one possession game and I put them basic no I put literally put them in the red zone with that interception so I'm getting in my own way we should be up big right now and just wide open over there 
has Florida is now just moving the ball with so much ease. Graham Mertz had a terrible first half, but the second half he has been fantastic. I'm going to hand it off to Montreal Johnson. Dion Walker just got thrown by Montreal Johnson. I don't think that's very realistic, but that's okay. Second and goal. I'm anticipating a pass here. And it's going to be one. And he's going to get in the end zone for a touchdown. And Florida now has an opportunity to tie up the game here with a two-point conversion. I'm going to try to get in there, and he got it. So it is now 35-35 to 35 after an abysmal second half from me. And we have to be very careful on this drive not to turn the ball over. And I can't get any returns going with Barry on Brown either. We're going to get it in there to Jamori Macklin, who can't hang on to it. Let's get Demi Sumo up there for the first down and a great run from Demi Sumo to help us out a little bit. I'm going to roll out here. I'm going to wait for Brandon White to maybe get open. He's not going to get open, so I'm going to take off with Vandegrift. He breaks a tackle. Unfortunately, he stepped out of bounds. We might have been able to take off for a lot more yards there if he hadn't have stepped out of bounds. So it's second and three. I think we've got a pretty favorable situation here to pick up the first down, and Chip Trainum is going to chug forward for that first. Jamori Macklin going to be going over on this jet sweep and able to get past him. Jamori Macklin picks up the first down. Try to get him off sides. And that's going to be a catch. No, we dropped it, but I think they might have gotten past him. Oh, they're going to call holding. So Ben Christman gets called for holding. They're going to decline that, I would assume, make it fourth and six. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm not trying a field goal right now. So I'm not really sure what I should do. What should I do here? Because we're, we're not in a position right now. If I miss a field goal, they're going to take over right here anyway. So maybe I should just try to pass the ball. And the, the game clock is running out. But we have Barry on Brown in single coverage on the left side of the field. I'm going to... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I crumble under pressure, man. I, just, I got nervous. I got nervous. I rushed the pass. I didn't let him develop downfield. And now we are in a terrible, terrible situation. The defense is going to be tasked once again with trying to get a big-time stop. Just don't run into the kicker. That's all I'm asking. No running into the kicker. No running into the kicker. So we're going to just let him kick the field goal. And now we just got to hope we can move down the field in a minute and win this game. I mean, we should not be in this position right now because, I, I mean, I just played awful. It, oh, my goodness, Barry on Brown. Oh, my goodness, Barry on Brown. No way. No way Barry on Brown's cribbing this at the end of the game. Oh, <laughs> Barry on Brown in a critical moment takes the kickoff 99 yards for a touchdown with a minute remaining. And all of a sudden, Kentucky is in the lead. Oh my goodness. So they have one minute. They have three timeouts. And they're on the 25-yard line. Please tell me we could pull him down in bounds. We did not. So he gets out of bounds. I'm going to try to just disrupt here with Dion. Get in there on Mertz. And down he goes. Man, if they get in a situation, I mean, they could kick a... F no, they couldn't actually. It's a four-point game. I can't do math. I literally thought it was a three-point game, and I thought that they could get in the lead. No receivers back there. First and ten. I got in Mertz's face. He delivered the pass, and, man, we just need to stop them from scoring a touchdown. They have 42 seconds, though. They have plenty of time to go. Oh, get in there, Dion. Oh, my God. I literally can't believe it, bro. We get a kickoff return for a touchdown to take the lead with a minute left. They're going to kick it to Barry on again. It's a bold strategy. Let's try this. Oh my god, I'm so mad right now, bro. 
What? Oh my god. And we have no timeouts. Like, oh my. I am so upset right now. And our, our, our O-line's not going to block. We're going to lose this. Woo! I'm going to try this deep to bury on. And he can't come down with it. We don't even have Brown in the game right now. And I throw a pick. This game's over. So we are going to fall to three and four. And I don't, I don't know what to do with myself right now, man. We were up big at halftime. We get a kickoff return for a touchdown with a minute left to take the lead. They scored 25 points in the fourth quarter. That was a m potential momentum-shifting game for Kentucky. And we lose it in a heartbreaking fashion. Zion Childress wins def SEC Defensive Player of the Week with a pick six and seven tackles. Well-deserved for Zion there. And we've got two and five Auburn coming to Kroger Field now. So... This is an opportunity to pick up an SEC win. We get to 500 on the season. Let's take a look at our schedule for the rest of the year after this. I mean, it doesn't get much easier, to be honest. Um, yeah, so after Vanderbilt or after Auburn, we have Tennessee, eighth ranked Tennessee on the road at eighth ranked Tennessee. We get a nice, chill FCS game, and then we finish the season with two ranked teams at Texas and 20th ranked Louisville. So this doesn't get much easier. It looks like we're 14th out of 16 teams in the SEC right now as well. So definitely not the season that Kentucky fans were hoping for. I'm just hoping I can turn it around a little bit. All right, so we have an opportunity here today to try to get a win over a struggling SEC team, but an SEC win altogether would just be very nice. And it's still possible to have a good season. Like, we still have games left on the schedule that if we were to win, like, if we win out, we can finish the year ranked 100%. We're in a very bad spot right now record-wise, sitting at 3-4. and four, But I think we can absolutely turn this season around. I just have to be smarter with the football. And I started to be smarter with the football in the first half against Florida. Um, but hopefully I can start to get more consistent with that. And they're going to pick up the first down. And now Deion Walker is injured. It's third and three. They're going to read option here. And fourth and inches. I'm not sure who that was that made the tackle, but that was super clutch. They're going to come onto the field and try to kick a field goal. And I just feel like I should just not even try to block the kick because I don't want the running into the kicker uh, penalty. <laughs> Train them in motion. And it's just immediate drop off to him. We've got blocking on the outside. Chip Trainum going to turn up the field. Cuts to the in. And we are down at the six-yard line. And they just blow right through our D-line. And sack Brock Vandegrift. So not the result we wanted there. I'm going to try a mid-screen to Brandon White here. Hopefully he can turn on the Jets, use his blocking, and get in the end zone. And we get down at the four-yard line. And I don't know, there's just something about Brandon White that I really like right now and the, the impact he's having on, an, on this offense where we were really struggling. We're going to go slants on the goal line to Dane Key and using Dane Key in specific situations instead of expecting him to get open all the time is working out. He had two touchdowns against Florida. Now he has another touchdown in this one. So taking Dane Key out of the starting lineup and putting Brandon White into the starting lineup seems to be working better for our offense, and I'm not having to only rely on Barryon Brown anymore. I can actually see in the crowd the the amount of empty stands that we have because we're struggling. We're three and four right now, so we're not selling out this game. And I love that attention to detail. That that whole top the whole upper bowl basically is completely empty. Uh, which is just a crazy detail. I, I love the amount of detail in this game. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to hand it off to Jarquez Hunter, and wow, Keyshawn Silver was there for the stuff. So there's a flag on the play, and Cam Coleman's in the end zone. Thankfully, that is coming back because of the holding on Jaden Muskrat. God, we almost ran into the kicker again. I don't know if y'all saw that, but I can't believe they didn't call that. We literally jumped directly into him, so I'm not sure what's up with the whole running into the kicker thing, but 
Let's give our guy or let's give our fans a reason to start coming back to the games, man. Like they're just not they don't want to watch us. We're we're struggling, we're making too many mistakes. They all hate Brock Vandegrift. They're all calling for Gavin Wimsat to burn his red shirt and play. They're all call they said anybody but Brock Vandegrift. We want Bo Allen in there. The the fans hate Brock Vandegrift because he's just struggling so bad. Such a disappointment from the preseason hype. Fire fire me, fire fire coach. But uh, we're going to try to turn this thing around for him. Brandon White is wide open on the post route, and then he's going to use that 98 speed to pick it up. And this is exactly why I put Brandon White in the starting lineup. I get that he's a 64 overall. I understand that. But that 98 speed and 94 acceleration just makes him, like, speed and acceleration is really all you need uh, as a receiver. And that's what they've got. So now we're going to get Chip train him with the slip screen, and he's going to pick up a first down. So now we're moving the football. Single man coverage with Barry on Brown over there. We already know what that means. See if we can do anything with Barry on on the punt return. We're usually able to at least get a few yards, but they don't want to block. It's a good thing Barry on hit that spin move, uses his legs, and gets some movement, man. But my goodness. So it's not time to bench Brock Vandegrift just yet. Uh, at the end of the day, he's literally the best chance we have. And I'm going to have to get out of this pocket. Nice pocket presence. I tried to get rid of it to Jamori Macklin, who was starting to break open. That's exactly what I'm going to try to do. Oh, my goodness. What a dot and what a catch. The window that I had to fit that into was insane. Look at this. Oh my, God. look at the, I mean, that's literally the smallest possible window. You got the Auburn player turning into freaking Homelander over here. That was ridiculous, and shout out to Baryon for holding on to that. We were able to punt it. We were able to get a safety on defense. And now, ooh, come on, Chip. Oh, I got so close to breaking that one with Chip Tranum. And Chip Tranum, if he just had a little bit more breakaway speed, that's a touchdown. Here we go. Might hit Jamori Macklin on this curl here if it's not covered. And I, it was way too late, but I got it to him, and he scores a touchdown. The DB way overplayed that, and it was able to get into the hands of Jamori Macklin for the touchdown. That was almost bad. I thought that was a pick, uh, especially since I was on the run there. So we're on the run, about to get hit deliver it to him and look it literally quite literally went through the db's hands and jamori macklin gets to break free for the touchdown we moving they're trying to score here before the half they got one timeout left Dion walker back in the game and he survives an absolute haymaker from jq hardaway and they're trying to get on the board here before the half peyton thorne Sacked by Keyshawn Silver. So down he goes. We're going to go into cover two man. Spread out, spread out a little bit. Pass commit. Come on. Eight seconds left. He's going to have to get rid of it quick. And it's picked. De'Eric Jackson intercepts the football on the sideline. And we're able to prevent a score before halftime. Jordan Dingle with the catch. To move the chains, and Jordan Dingle's been a really nice target for us this year. He's been a nice safety valve, him and Josh Caddis both. And we're going to go Brandon White here as we were about to get hit. And Brandon White picks up the first time. He's got five catches for 113 yards, and he has automatically become our second best receiver. And it, unfortunately, it was at the expense of Dane Key's starting spot. What a dot! What an absolute laser that was! And how about the catch from Barry on Brown to hang on to it? I honestly thought I just threw a pick. Under pressure, puts it right in the bread basket of Barry on Brown. That was beautiful. We're on the move. Let's see if we can't get Big Brock in the end zone. And he's hurt. Brock Vandegriff is injured on the play. So it's going to be Bo Allen. Bo Allen in the game at, at quarterback. 
And nobody's open. We're going to zip that one to Barry on Brown who catches it. So the first pass attempt of the season for the backup Bo Allen is a touchdown to Barry on Brown. Third and 12, just outside the red zone for Auburn. And for the first time this season, we have destroyed a team. Just an absolutely fantastic effort from the Cats today. I mean, we had so much to prove. Our fans are pissed, and as they should be. I mean, it's been a really disappointing season for us. We should have way more wins than we do. We've choked away some games. We shouldn't have lost to Vanderbilt. We shouldn't have lost to Florida, and yet we did. And we shouldn't have lost to South Carolina. Like, we should be – we should only have one loss right now, and that should be Georgia. So, um Kentucky, you know, we, we, we gave the fans something to cheer about today. I'm trying to give them some more. I'm trying to just make this a blowout. Let's get some confidence going for our team because the defense played phenomenal today. Peyton Thorne, I think, threw three picks. He was looking like me out there. Um, and I'm just really proud of the way we performed today. And Brandon White hauls it in. 362 passing yards, three touchdowns, and one interception for Vandegrift today. Dane Key's in the game. Whenever I see him in the game, I want to try to get him a pass because he sacrificed his starting line, his starting spot for the betterment of the team, but he did drop it there. And there goes Brandon White again. Touchdown, Brandon White. And Brandon White, right, every single time Brandon White gets the ball, he proves why it was a good idea to put him in the starting lineup. And Brock Vandegrift throws his fourth touchdown of the day. How about us coming out here after a brutal loss to Florida and blowing Auburn out of the water 44-6, to easily the best performance of the season for Kentucky. And maybe this gives us the confidence we need to finish out the season strong. We have Tennessee next week. Eighth-ranked Tennessee on the road. We've already proven that we can win on the road against top-ranked teams because we did it to Ole Miss. And then we have an FCS team, and then we have Texas, and we end the season with Louisville. So we have three of our four last games are ranked teams. We blow out Auburn. We're going to go into next week with some momentum. Personally, I'm pretty confident that I can finish out the season strong, and maybe we end the season ranked because of these top-ranked teams we have to play. Um, it'll be very interesting to see if we can win out on these games. There's no way we don't get ranked. I think with the schedule we have, there's a genuine path to the playoffs. I know that might sound crazy. That might sound crazy. But if you beat top 10 Tennessee on the road, right, Probably we probably don't get ranked at that point just because of the four losses we have. But then we have a cupcake game with FCS Southeast. Hopefully cupcake. Obviously, I've heard about FCS Southeast beating the crap out of people in their dynasty. But cupcake game against FCS Southeast. And then we have two ranked ranked teams to uh, in the season. Texas is sitting at 4 and 3 though, so they may not be ranked for much longer. But if we can if we win out, we will absolutely be ranked at the end of the season and if we win out, I think there's a path to where we're at top top 12 team maybe and we make the college football playoffs. So I think there's definitely still a path there. Um, obviously, we would much rather not be in this situation. I mean, look at these close losses, you know, three-point loss to Florida on the road ranked Florida. We get a, you know, brutal 10 point loss to Vanderbilt where we let them hang 52 on us really close loss to South Carolina. Like really Georgia is the only game that we decisively lost. Like the rest of these games were all just user error. Ole Miss sixth ranked Ole Miss. We blew them out on the road and we're their only loss. They're sixth in the country right now. So next episode is going to be really interesting as we take on Tennessee and FCS Southeast. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited for the end, the last little bit of this season. We got a couple episodes left before this season is over. Uh, obviously, I will continue into next season. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.